this module, we're going to begin to install and configure Ubuntu Server in our Oracle VM Virtual Box. This module is going to assume that you've already configured an Oracle VM Virtual Box and that you've already set it up to boot off of the Ubuntu Server 12.04 Live CD. So let's get started. So here you see I've got my StatusNet virtual machine that I configured in the previous modules. I'm going to go ahead and click on Start and begin the virtual machine install process for Ubuntu. Here you'll notice that I've been prompted with some information. You want to make sure that you read through these very carefully and understand what they're trying to tell you. In this case, I have Auto Capture Keyboard option turned on. This means that my virtual machine is automatically going to capture keystrokes anytime my virtual window is activated. This can sometimes have unintended consequences. So if I ever want to escape and get back to my Windows environment, I can press the host key. The host key in this case has been defined as the right control button. Now that I've read this and understand it, I don't want to see this message again. So I'll opt out and click OK. You'll notice in the right hand corner I'm also reminded which button is my host key, in this case the right control button. Another virtual box information window has appeared and it's telling me that my virtual machine window is optimized to work in 32-bit mode, but the virtual display is currently set to 16-bit. This isn't a problem since we're not going to be using graphics, we're just simply running a server. So I'll opt out of this message and click OK. You'll notice right away I've been brought to the boot menu for Ubuntu Server to choose a language. But before we get started with Ubuntu, let's look over the options we have in Oracle VirtualBox. I click on the Machine menu item. I can see Settings, Take a Snapshot, Session Information. I can also pause the virtual machine, reset it, shut it down, or close the virtual machine. Under View, I have the option to switch to full screen mode or scale mode. And you notice that there's also shortcuts. The host button, or right control button in this case, and the F key would switch to and from full screen. I'm going to stay in window mode for now. Under Devices, you'll see that I can also choose an ISO image. I've already defined my Ubuntu server image as my starting CD-ROM DVD disk file. I can also connect to my real D drive and my real E drive. Both are CD and DVD ROMs in my system. Optionally, I have access to USB devices, network adapters, and a whole host of other information. At the bottom of the Oracle VM virtual box, you'll also see some status indicators. The first one is the serial ATA virtual hard disk indicator. Next one is my virtual CD-ROM indicator. Next is my USB indicator. Then my network indicator. These four indicators will light up periodically as each one is activated or used. So let's go ahead and get started with installing the Ubuntu Server Operating System. You'll notice that as I've clicked inside the Oracle VM virtual box, I have another information window that's telling me that I've clicked inside the virtual machine. And in order to capture my mouse, I'll need to use the right control button to get in and out of the screen. Notice I no longer have any mouse control, but if I use the right control button, or my host button in this case, I'll be able to get back to using my mouse. As I click in the window, You'll notice, again, the virtual box information window is warning me. Now that I've read this, I can go ahead and opt out of this message so it doesn't come up each time. So let's choose English as our language. And we're brought to the main Ubuntu installation options. If you think there might be a problem with your disk or the ISO image that you downloaded, you can always choose test memory or check disk for defects. But since I know that the ISO image I downloaded was successful, I'm going to go ahead and start the installation. You also notice that 
the virtual machine is now reporting that mouse pointer has integration. And I'll opt out of that message. Now I'll choose English as my installation language. Next, I'll choose my time zone. And feel free to choose whatever time zone you live in. You can also have your keyboard detected, but in this case, I already know that I want an English US keyboard. Again, feel free to modify these instructions to fit your language, time zone, and specific type of keyboard. Now I'll be asked to enter a host name for this system. Here, you can choose whatever host name you feel like using, but try to choose something that's unique to your network. In my case, I'm going to choose EdView Status Net. You use the tab key to switch back and forth between the various fields and enter to click. Now I'm going to create a secure user account for this server. In this case, the name of my user is going to be StatusNet. You can feel free to make your username whatever you feel like. I will choose StatusNet for the username. And now I'll choose a password for the StatusNet user. In my case, I'll go with a very simplified password. F-O-O-T-B-A-L-L-8. Hopefully your password is a little more secure than that. We'll re-enter the password. Then we'll be asked, do we want to encrypt our directory? No, no need for this. And hopefully your time zone has been automatically detected based on your host operating system's time zone. If not, you can choose a time zone from a list. Otherwise, if the selected time zone is correct, you can just choose yes, this time zone is correct. Next, we're going to go through the process of partitioning our virtual hard drive. We're going to use the guided option and use the entire disk and set up the LVM. Our only disk is the VirtualBox hard disk we created. So hit enter. And now the Ubuntu installation is asking, do we want to make changes to this disk? We'll choose tab to get over to the yes option and then hit the enter key. We want to use the full size, so we'll hit continue. Next, we want to make these changes to the drive, so we'll click yes. Next, the Ubuntu server installation is asking if we have a proxy server. If you don't have a proxy server, just click Continue. Next, we're asked if we want to automatically install upgrades and maintain the system as a secure Linux Ubuntu installation. So we'll choose Install Secure Updates Automatically. Next, we have only the core system installed. If we want to install anything additional to the core Ubuntu server, we need to choose it here to help create a pre-configured system that's ready to go out of the box. Since we'll be using StatusNet, we need to install a Linux Apache MySQL PHP or LAMP server. So we'll go down with the arrow key, hit the space bar to select LAMP, and tab to continue the installation. Since we chose the LAMP installation option, 
we're now being asked to install a password for the MySQL database administrative root user. This user is the secure user used in MySQL databases. In this case, I'm going to go with a simple password, but hopefully yours is more secure, and be sure to write it down. My root password will be MySQLPWD. The Grub Bootloader will allow us to automatically boot this virtual machine without having to use the CD-ROM or ISO image in our virtual machine. So do we want to install to the master boot record on this virtual machine? Yes. Now the installation is completed. We want to make sure we remove the virtual CD by going up to the Devices option, choose CD Devices, and choose the Remove Disk from Virtual Drive. This will essentially eject the disk and allow us to restart our virtual machine using the Grub Bootloader. Now, in the virtual machine, we can click Continue. Now our virtual machine is booting for the first time with Ubuntu. And there you have it, an Ubuntu 12.04 LTS virtual installation.